Hi, we're back with Conversations with Kick Care Canada, and with us is a very special guest, Dr. Andrew McNabb. Dr. McNabb is a pediatrician known throughout Canada and around the world, and he just happens to be the lead pediatrician for Kick Care Canada Society. And today, Andrew is going to share nurturing know-how. Hello, Andrew, welcome. Hi. Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. Before we begin, Andrew, would you tell us a little bit about you? Well, first of all, I'm a parent. Uh, I'm a father in a blended family with five children and six grandchildren. So much of what we'll be sharing today is first-hand mm. knowledge for me, but also professionally in caring over a lifetime for infants and their parents. I've learned many of the things that uh, we'll be pointing out that parents can do so that they can benefit their children and also enjoy being parents uh, even more uh, as a result. Well, let's jump right into it. What are some of the things that parents can do with a very young infant? I think the first thing is to make sure that they, they talk to their babies. Uh, many parents believe that because young infants are not verbal, they're not using words, that somehow they're not going to comprehend when they're spoken to. But talk is essential uh, as part of the learning process for an infant. And it's also part of the bonding process which enables an infant to get to know her mother and her father that much better. And when does it begin? Well, if you think back, uh, a baby in the uterus will in fact be hearing mother's voice, a little muffled, but nonetheless the intonation, the resonance, the vibrations are something that she will pick up on uh, and learn to recognize. So if that were not to continue after birth, it would be very abnormal for the infant. And similarly, that period in late pregnancy is an opportunity for a father to speak to his son in utero, to put a hand on the uterus, to feel those movements as the baby is moving inside mum, and to speak, to get to know, to introduce, for his voice and his resonance and his personality to come over to the infant also. Can so dads do it if it's a, if it's a girl too? Um, perhaps it's even more important, but yes, <laughs> obviously both, both genders. But the baby even then will reciprocate. The uh, pattern of movement will likely change in response to familiarity of uh, being spoken to in that way by either mum or dad. Mm. One of the things that you talk about is that babies are good listeners. Well, it's true, and it's true for a very basic reason. They need this process of being spoken to uh, for their developmental uh, cycles um, to really kick in at full speed. We know that in order for babies to develop socially and emotionally in an optimum way, they need nurture. Now, nurture is the, is the care and development that we provide for them, uh, which enables them to grow both physically and emotionally. So that nurture in the early days and weeks of life comes particularly through this verbal contact and exchange uh, between uh, caregivers and the infant. But one of the things that's very hard for parents of new babies is they feel that they're not getting anything back. I mean, babies don't smile right away. They don't really talk right away. So, Well, this is something that we've learned more about. When I was um, a young doctor at the end of the last century, <laughs> uh, I couldn't quite understand why my mentors would in fact speak to tiny babies when they were caring for them. And what I learned from them was that even though they are nonverbal, as we mentioned, the tone of the voice is reassuring, the sounds, the resonance, again, may be familiar to what they've heard in utero. And I found myself in caring for infants that if you just talk in everyday terms, I'm just going to listen to your chest, I'm just going to put my hand on your stomach, now we're going to cover you up and give you back to mom. These are reassuring 
things which often enable the baby to um, go through the process um, of that unusual event with a stranger in a more confident and comfortable manner. So these pathways that the talking uh, does are very important and it's something that all caregivers uh, need to do. So in a minute we're going to go to a video that you've chosen and it's because uh, you were talking about how babies would talk to us with their eyes and we're going to go to that now and we'll see and we'll be back in a minute. When we first uh, came home from the hospital, um, we see baby smile, but with his eyes closed, so kind of like we're not sure whether he's really responding. But then when he first responds to you, that's uh, really memorable, like it's very happy. One of the remarkable things, one of the many remarkable things about the human newborn is that they come sort of pre-programmed to do this kind of mirroring of the, of the emotions that they see on another's face. One example of the kind of responsive, nurturing, relational activity between a parent and a child is this showing an emotion, reading an emotion, and the exchange back and forth that can even happen with a, with a pre-verbal child who's not able to use language yet, but who uh, is able to have a whole interaction with a father or a mother um, based only on this exchange of facial expression. Andrew, what stood up? out for you from that video clip? Well, the two things in particular. One is Ethan is clearly responding to what is going on around him and what he is hearing. He can hear his parents talking. He recognizes their voices. Second thing is mum saying how wonderful it was when they got the response of him smiling. But what I would say to parents is you're getting responses much earlier than that if you know to look for them. When a baby is in fact making little movements, when the feet are kicking, when the hands are fisting, when the eyes are looking over your face, scanning uh, to look for a response, that is actually gestures coming back to you in response to your talking. And if you recognize that, you can in fact feel very good that your baby is responding positively to the talking that you, you, you are doing. Uh, there are critical windows in an infant's development as well which, where they need to have patterns of stimulation or experiences uh, in order for the brain's pathways to actually be hardwired and developed, but also for the chemical reactions, the chemistry of their emotions to be triggered and programmed so that they can respond uh, to pleasure, sadness, pain in a normal and healthy way as they get older. And so what can parents do to try and encourage these chemical responses? Well, the important thing is not to miss these opportunities. Um, parents who don't speak much in the first weeks of life are missing a golden opportunity. Parents who maybe don't want to speak can sing as an alternative. Uh, music uh, stimulates other areas of the brain, other pathways. It again generates these pleasure responses. When opera singers sing, they release something called endorphins, which are the ultimate pleasure chemicals. And probably small amounts of these are released in babies also. So talking and singing and hearing other people uh, laughing and uh, talking and interacting amongst themselves is all very positive for stimulating a baby's development, providing nurture during these early weeks of life before the more obvious uh, responses like smiling um, or beginning to vocalize come into play. And I know that you care a lot about touch and in the second half of our talk today we're going to be talking about touch. But, um, if you think about um, that chemical response, I think you said that it comes also just from gaze. 
Absolutely. Now, if you remember back to the video, we saw Tina looking at her baby Nico, and you could see there was chemistry between those two. They, they, they were in love with each other. Yes. And uh, that isn't just uh, a visual thing where the gaze is engaged in that way. That also uh, results in stimulation of, of chemicals uh, within the body uh, that uh, is all part of the nurturing process. This chemistry uh, is a very real way that the things parents and caregivers do translates into nurture for the infant. I know you're concerned that pa parents today are not spending enough time looking into their baby's eyes. What are they doing instead? <laughs> well, there are a variety of things. We're all busy people. Yeah. And again, if parents understand, as I hope they will from our discussions, this intense value of holding a baby within their focal range and engaging them and getting that response, seeing the baby scanning their face, the eyes move in what seem like random movements. But in fact, it's the baby checking, where are the eyebrows, where is the nose, what's that thing underneath that's moving, is there a hairline? Some people have hairlines, <laughs> you can manage without, but the, even um, the baby will scan the face. So those seemingly random mo movements that parents can all too readily dismiss if they don't understand them are in fact your baby signaling back to you that she's heard what you're saying, uh, that she's noticed what you're doing, that she's heard your song and recognized it. She knows it's her father speaking and sending the message back. I know it's you, it's interesting, I'm learning from it. So we're going to go to a little break now and when we come back, we're going to talk about touch. We'll take a little break where you can learn some more about Kick Care Canada resources and how you can access these freely. <coughs> A child's early years are foundational for lifelong mental and physical health. Kid Care Canada Society is a charitable organization incorporated in the province of British Columbia. We seek to empower families to raise their children to be socially and emotionally healthy and ensure families and those who support them have easy access to relevant current research at no cost to the end user. Our appealing videos, now being captioned in various languages, feature world-renowned experts and real families. To access these videos and other free resources, log on to kidcarecanada.org. Welcome back. Andrew, before the break, we were talking about parents being too busy to look into their baby's eyes. Well, there are distractions these days. First of all, you have to know that it's important, which people now do. But secondly, you have to be prepared to turn off the television, put your phone down, leave the newspaper to one side and actually enjoy this, this interaction to realize that uh, your baby needs that gaze, needs the stimulus, needs this, as Tom Boyce says, the, the serve and volley of, of stimulus going to and fro, uh, so that all those good things that provide nurture and, and development actually happen. Mm. And you also said that touch is huge for babies. Touch is probably the most fundamental of our, of our human senses. It really magnifies uh, feelings and emotions and sets them in context. If you think back to uh, as a child when you'd fallen over and grazed your knee, the, the arm around the shoulder or the pat on the head from dad or the kissing it better is all the magic uh, of touch. And unfortunately, these days, touch has other connotations. But good touch is terribly important uh, for infants because, again, it reinforces all these uh, developmental pathways. It's, it's a key part of the nurture, along with the talking and the singing and the gaze. And to give you an example, uh, after birth, 
um, mother and infant really benefit from that first skin-to-skin -skin contact when there's that intimacy of touch, uh, ideally with baby on mother's skin. Mum benefits by, again, a hormonal release, a release of oxytocin, which begins to initiate her ability to breastfeed. And also, um, it, it helps the infant um, to, to develop. That, that touch, that skin-to-skin -skin contact is essential for mom after birth to promote her ability to breastfeed and also to contract the uterus so she doesn't bleed. There are chemical reasons that she benefits. But the baby does too. The baby gets a tremendous burst of wonderful, uh, wonderful feelings from that touch, which again creates uh, that bond between mother and baby, um, which is fundamental to their ability to, um, uh, to benefit from nurture. And there are now, um, uh, we now understand that skin-to-skin -skin contact between fathers and their infants, just for a short period in the first few hours of life, changes the way fathers uh, feel about their babies and how they react towards them as well. And this probably has um, a chemical mechanism also. In a minute, we're going to go to a little video clip from our uh, baby massage series. And so we'll get to see uh, a little bit about what that's all about. And then I'm going to ask you to tell us a, a little bit about that program for dads when mom has to have a cesarean section. So right now, we'll just go and, and look at that video. Babies um, experience the world, of course, through their ears and their eyes, um, and they experience the world through their, you know, smell and taste, all those senses. But I would say none of those senses is more important than the sense of touch. Um, they don't see very well very far. They are not actually interested in that many smells besides the smell of their mother and the smell of milk. You know, breast milk has a flavor, it's a delicious flavor, but that's all they have. There's really not a lot that they can experience or that reassures them as much as touch. So you're just bringing your hands together at your heart. Well, touching not only helps um, stimulate neural development and increase health for the baby, what it does is it really um, encourages and accentuates the mother-child bond. Babies need to be touched. If a baby doesn't get touched, it, it will not thrive. So you kind of want to catch them at a good time. And Massage the decreases their stress hormones, increases their bonding hormones, and this leads to a whole cascade of benefits around improved nutrition, improved neural development, improved physical coordination, better sleep. Moms always love that part. With postpartum depression, the massage can help both to prevent it by increasing the bond between mother and child and because it lowers the cortisol hormones that are closely linked to depression and that does that both for baby and mom. Yeah, and come down and followed by the, the other hand. So it's what we call a walk. Under the age of six months, a daily massage is, is, is really wonderful and for the development of the nervous system and uh, for the bonding, enhancement of the bonding and attachment with their caregiver and um, for the, the health benefits of weight gain, reducing colic and fussiness, and just helping baby to relax. So one, uh, one question that I get frequently with massage, uh, or with baby massage, is when should I massage a baby? Um, and my answer to that is it doesn't matter. Whenever it works for the rhythm of your family. Some people, it works really well for them to do it first thing in the morning. Other families want to have their baby massage happen uh, right at bedtime um, where they've gone for a bath and then they do a massage and then straight into bed. What do you like about that video? Uh, I like the fact that it really emphasizes the positive aspects uh, of touch and puts it in a formal context that uh, parents can in fact offer something like that as a um, specific 
um, action that they do. It's some nurture that they can give during the course of the day that is both good for them and also good for their infant. And nurture is a two-way street. If we nurture our infants well, the returns they give us back make us feel better as parents. And too many parents these days are chasing more material things. They're worried about schedules or specific facts, and they miss out on the benefits of these uh, free gifts that come from a really good exchange with their infant. And infant massage is a good example of where those gifts can come from. So who ideally should be doing infant massages? Well, a lot of parents feel they need to be taught how to do them, and there are excellent practitioners, as the video shows. But in fact, in reality, when your baby is there, just doing what feels natural in the way of touch and seeing the response that your infant gives you uh, is a good way to go. Problem is that not all parents are comfortable with touch. They either haven't experienced touch, hugs, care uh, of that kind uh, as children themselves. So if you like, they've missed that critical window for developing the good feelings that come from good touch. And others, of course, have unfortunately had bad experiences and are so reluctant. But if we deprive our infants, or indeed each other, uh, of touch, uh, we're really doing uh, a terrible disservice to our infant and to each other. Imagine not having an arm put around you when you're bereaved, or somebody reaching out to, to touch you in, uh, with an apology. So we need to focus on good touch. We need to make sure it's part of the everyday experience for an infant. And for those parents who need help in moving into the, their comfort zone with touch, learning to do infant massage is an excellent way of uh, uh, reaching that goal. Mm. Now, you have lots of experience internationally in different African countries. Did you want to say something about that? Yes, what I've learned in Africa is that um, infants really benefit from an extended family. We've talked now about mothers in particular and the benefits that mothers get from, from effective nurture, how there's a role for fathers. But what's wonderful in an African setting is how when mum comes home, the baby is passed to dad, goes to siblings, Granny is there. The baby continues this cycle of being talked to, being played with, being looked at, being touched, um, really for much longer in the course of his or her day than we do in our culture where our families are less extended than they used to be. And I would go further and I would say that the proof of what we're talking about today comes from Africa because those infants by their, the time they're about a year of age, are definitely developmentally more advanced than infants in our Western culture. But, I mean, there is variety here among different cultural groups, and there are cultural groups where there are large extended families in Canada, and babies do benefit too. We have a lot to learn from them, and uh, the cultural beliefs, the cultural norms, that uh, individual groups celebrate mm -hmm. um, are, are good to look at because what works for one group will likely work for another. And so tell me a little bit about this, uh, the way it's, uh, things are taking place. I think it's Lionsgate Hospital for mums who have, have a cesarean section. Yes, there's a program at Lionsgate Hospital where when the baby is delivered by cesarean section, an operation to deliver the baby, uh, while mum is uh, finishing up in the operating room, the baby is taken with dad to the room in the hospital uh, where, where mum will come later. And dad is encouraged to, to undo his shirt and have 20 or 30 minutes of skin-to-skin -skin time uh, with his infant. And uh, the research indicates that it definitely changes the attitude and the behavior of fathers towards their infants. Um, and it's likely because of the intensity of that bonding experience.
and we know that our friend Dr. Nils Bergman in South Africa, he has done considerable research on the social and emotional development uh, of children and believes that it begins with skin to skin. Absolutely. There's um, a, lot of, a lot of good research and um, more importantly, the parents that we talk to, um, the dads that we talk to, um, tell us that that's their experience also. So we're not, in any of these things we're talking about uh, in terms of delivering nurture, these are everyday simple things which if parents understand they're beneficial, they can do them easily, it doesn't cost anything, they can just prioritize them into their day. It benefits the baby's development, benefits the parents because they feel better. Andrew, you have, you have delivered. You have shared your nurturing know-how. Thank you so much for coming. A great pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today for Nurturing Know-How. Please follow us on social media. Check out our resources on our website. And remember, we're here to support you on your journey as a parent. As we define nurture in our book, ABCs for New Parents, Nurture is the care and encouragement we give our babies to grow and develop. The ABC's book is being distributed to all new parents in the province and copies can also be purchased online at the Queen's printer through Crown Publications.